What's up, YouTube? We're going to look at cars and trucks. We only have a, a few to look at because, well, towards the end of the month, it's been a little dry and didn't really feel like getting stuff online. There's kind of a bit of a lull before a lot of new stuff comes out. It did break down, though. Got a couple things coming in the mail, but uh, we don't need to wait on those. We can always do it next video. Did run into some cool vintage Hot Wheels we'll look at. Well... This seems like yesterday I've seen these on the pigs, <laughs> but these would be considered definitely old at this point. So we'll look at the copyright date. And then uh, M2 Vans, they're really hitting it good with the uh, the G-Series Chevy Vans. 1971 Vans, I haven't seen any other model years yet. Uh, but really the Vans stayed pretty similar, so I'm sure they will expand on the model years very soon first I, I wanted to celebrate getting this casting it was a hot wheels premium really don't talk about hot wheels premium on this channel because there definitely plenty of that on youtube but this was a car that came out as an exclusive that when you got a subscription and they finally brought it to the hollywood line and it was been hard to find and anybody that was interested in something like this it is unusual and it has some interesting ways that they assembled it so we'll take a look real quick of course this is the famous Rotson 240s Dotson and very early in roadkill but uh, I think memory calls they did a 4.3 Chevy turbo rud rudimentary turbo setup and it was a very rusty car so they had kind of piece it together from there uh, casting's got the rust holes in it which I really never saw this up close this car until I bought one so kind of see how it looks on camera let's take this down a little bit there we go You can see how they do this setup on the engine. They take this piece and they wrap it around and they put a rivet there. Holds it all together. Pretty cool. Wheels are chrome in the release of the Motor Trend one, I think. I was looking online. These just have like the basic plastic color. They're not chrome. But Tampa works really cool. I just am glad to have one. So just wanted to share that little win. You know, seeing this on the pegs. <laughs> it's very hard to find Hot Wheels Premium. Much less Auto World at this point. But that's really because I haven't really seen anybody stock Auto World. Except people that buy it online. So it's been a lot of talk about if Auto World's going away. For some locations and whatever. Target seems to be able to get those deluxe lines in pretty good you know the plastic wheel ones but you know they they sit around a lot a lot more than um than the premiums of course so hopefully we'll find some i was digging through the nypd diecast collection and i decided to open this up now the card i uh, stowed it away ready but look at this this is my blazer so we got a little K5, of course on the stock green light chassis, so pretty pretty pathetic looking right now. But uh, I'm really holding back on like doing one at a time. I want to find a source for some wheels and tires. I like the, uh, I really like the way the power wagon tires fit on the green light dog dishes like they use for the Chevy stuff, so. I just got to get a cheap way to get a bunch of those wheels and tires and then we'll start swapping everything. <laughs> I feel like that's the best combination yet that I've found. Of course, Auto World does really good tire and wheel, but they're expensive. I don't like ripping them apart. I have a lot of... Uh, Auto World, I think I've concentrated as the most something I like and then maybe the other two brands second. And then I'll try to get the premium Hot Wheels. But that's just kind of like ones I like. I don't really complete that. 
stuff, but I do have a big healthy collection of these type of cars. Anyway, here we go. We look at the Blazer before, we've talked about it before. I love the hitch setup, it just doesn't look right when it size of <laughs> ride height, but I do like that these come out. This one might be glued, but typically you can take this out of the receiver. So they make really good stock. Um, yeah, this one just broke, which is fine. I'm going to drill this out anyway, but they make a receiver you can go in and out with the hitch. It's very cool. All right, so, Blazer. I think it's a 87, no, 85. It's supposed to be an 85. Really, the NYPD used these, but uh, I believe they were the, uh, the Cuck Vs or the M1009 or 8s or whatever they were. But those military ones, the diesels, they might have had the gas ones, but they used the Suburbans a lot. Uh, K5s, I don't know how many they used. Uh, some of the stuff growing up in New Jersey, they had blazers like this, especially with fire departments and uh, EMS and stuff like that. Especially if you were a little bit in the more rural areas, they'd use these a lot too. Because I believe GM eventually made... A fleet one or a special service one as well as like you know that military surplus because that was very common for the departments to use those too so it could have been one or the other all right we're well, gonna go through this pretty quick because it's, <laughs> I didn't get that many cars but I just thought I'd like to you know get everybody a little update on what's going on with the collection and we'll we'll fill it in as we get them I'm third I'm going into the summer there's more releases we'll get some more stuff this is an Odd World van, so I needed the silver one. I got the beige, and this is the Plymouth. So we have the Chrysler or the Dodge. Dodge. Hopefully they'll do the Chrysler, but Plymouth now. So really, this had to change grill slightly. Car's the same thing. There you go. Some interesting stuff about Voyager. You know, it was predated minivans. The name Chry or Voyager. It was on like their big car. Pretty sure it was the big big wagon. So this thing is kind of funny because it's the exterior is cool. It's got the two tone, but then it's got like silver seats. So this is like silver paint. It's really supposed to be that super light gray that they did in the eighties, but they use silver. So it's kind of funny. It still looks okay. Like if you're back here, it kind of blends in. It's okay, but it wouldn't have been that bright. <laughs> Of course, they're going to mold that turbo four-cylinder, which is really mostly an option on these vans. And it will probably, I don't, I don't think too many people did the turbos on these. Really, they, they, uh, the facelifted one got a six-cylinder in it. Uh, or these, these might have had a six option pretty, pretty early in the game. I can't remember if they had a six to start. I don't think they had the long wheelbase one yet, so... I mean, they're talking about, like, the 84 ones and stuff. And then they, they quickly got bigger. But this one kind of fills in, so now they got four releases of these vans, plus that uh, Mother's Day one, which I don't have. But uh, that's pretty much it. I don't see any, like, hobby exclusive of these. They should do something with it. It's kind of a fun casting. And I'm sure they'll do the later 90, like a 91 or a 90, 1990, 89, where they had the full flush headlight. And hopefully they do the bigger wheelbase. That'd be cool. But this one's good with the two tone. I like that. So that's a good little addition. Um, 85 Voyager. Plymouth Voyager. I think the other one was a 84 Dodge Caravan. <laughs> so, there we go. Alright, let's get into M2. First, this one just today, I found it. So, this kind of prompted this. I was like, well, I got a, a little bit of cars to show now. So, this one is their off-road version. Comp Cam's truck. The uh, vintage Comp Cam's livery. This is another 71, but it's lifted G10. Now, back then, uh, Chevrolet didn't have factory four-wheel drive vans. And so this one uh, this one would have been, you know, super custom. But 
they did the four wheel drive. People did that to these vans, and there was kits. Uh, I don't know by seventy one you could do it. I don't know how many home, but by the end of the seventies and eighties there was stuff like just like you can put it, get the kits and put them together, get the suspension that you need to change. So this one's got the turbine wheels, uh, grill guard which I knocked off, and then basically the regular stuff. This stance is pretty good. I mean, look how fat the wheels and tires are. It's really sticking out. Some people like that. Leave it alone. Um, this is a, I don't know, 38s they look like, I guess. I don't know, something like that. So, big tire. I feel like I would like to, we'll probably dip this and, and get rid of the paint job. I'm going to take all the accessories off. And we're going to we're gonna start from square one. We're going to have a lifted van, but maybe we'll, we'll try, like, uh, I don't know, more of a stock wheel, maybe like a steely. And we'll see what we'll go from there. I think that'll look kind of cool. Maybe we can make a better bumper setup, too. So, probably get another one of these if I see it. Or they might be super collectible. Who knows? I did get, though, a boxed one of the next one. We'll see. Because that was really super cool. People that follow the the uh, Instagram, you'll see it. What I'm talking about. Or you probably already know what I'm talking about. Let's look underneath. So it's a more simplified base plate. But they put in their tried and true lifted setup. And this one is the metal leaf springs with the eyelets and then they fill it in with plastic it's a good design it's very hardy so I do like it um, if we look at this I don't know how level this front axle is and I don't know if it's because the molding is a little bit different on this side but to my eye it looked a little crooked that's easy I could probably fix that no problem when we put the van on the ground um, let's take a look and see if there's any, anybody can tell that if it's leaning one way or another. It seems to be pretty sturdy. Now, next thing we might want to look at is the gap in the fender. So we'll compare. This just drives, personally this drives me crazy, personally. If it's off, I, I notice it too much. It looks really close. So... When the van comes apart, we'll, we'll scrutinize that a little bit more. This one, spare tires on this side, and then we have the ladder. So, it, it's too bad that, other than green light, you know, these vans, more commonly, they were shorties like this, but more commonly, they had the longer wheelbase, and those look a little bit more stock. It would be like comparing a short bed truck to a long bed. And back in the 80s, 70s, and the most of what we saw was that longer version. So I, I would like it if they would do it at eventually. Someone do the the actual wheelbase van that was much more common. I mean, I like having this too, but I want the long wheelbase personally. So this is a cool van. Not complaining about it. It's cool. I like it. But this one takes the cake. Let's look at the box. Sweet box. Another like stock like this would be like something you'd see like if you went to the dealership <laughs> you know they'd paint it like this they give it to you like here it is uh sunny when you're looking at the van with pops because they do the factory color and the factory you know for that year the font so it's just it looks awesome i love it when they do the stock stuff like this but the van in it was cool too and then here's your barcode. So I got another one of these box, but look at this thing. This thing is sweet. I, I had to do the, I just swapped bases real quick and put the, the gussied up rims on it. I put the air band, well, the air looks like it fell back off. <laughs> it's supposed to have an air dam. But we'll look at this anyways, it's okay. I'm kind of debating whether it had that style air dam on the stock version or not anyway. So, two-tone yellow, and then we have the, I would say, what, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Yeah, three and three, yeah. So eight passenger. Um, maybe you could put eight there. If you had the little kids, you could probably put four across in this van. Uh, for sure. And then it had all that space in the back. And this is a shorty. So, like, for a normal family, before the minivans. And the station wagons are big, but not like this. So, a lot of people would do this, too. In all actuality, I'm sure the damn gas mileage would be almost the same. <laughs> with this, with a big block, like, let's say, Chevy wagon versus this. So, the 350 or a 305, 307, whatever they're using, small block, 5 liters. It would have been pretty pretty equivalent so this would be the half ton they made a three quarter and then that you could you put more people in that version that would be certainly longer wheelbase um you know 150 to 200 pound a person if they're adults you gotta times that so that that adds up quick and uh you need that brakes and suspension basically is what you get you know you get some frame too but that's the stuff you need and the heavier rear end for all that weight plus everybody's stuff now look at the spare tire on this. This thing looks like it holds like a Weber grill too, not just a spare tire. It's pretty big. I want to take it off, but I needed a couple more of these. I got one now, so I'm slowly probably going to try to get more. The green one's coming out. It doesn't seem to have the spare tire carrier, so we'll see. Kind of not really convinced about this. I guess the vans back then, they had barn doors, so you didn't need the um, thing that swung out. Like on the SUVs, a lot of the vans, when they had this, you know, the tire would go with the door. Um, but it had to be mounted a certain way or it would, you know, would interfere. So it's just really big. And, uh, you know, you get stock hinges. That's another thing. Put something too heavy back here. It starts to whack, whack everything out there, too. Although it was pretty heavy duty. Great looking awesome van of course now the two-wheel drive vans they definitely have a better base plate a little bit more detailed but there we go now let's look at some vintage i guess you'd call it vintage or <laughs> it's not an antique for sure. but it's definitely uh oh geez this is 2003 so 20 21 years could have come out in 04 so maybe 20 years even vintage experimental drag racing cars from the hot wheels 100 percent this is towards the end of its run back when uh oh boy this is really out of focus sorry um back in the day i got it for a good price 18 bucks these are two vehicles in here again when you want to show you some of the details of these things it's worth the money. Obviously, if you're a current collector, you know that the premium cars, like the Mini GTs and higher, Tomicas, you know, you're spending <laughs> one car is much more than that. So these are bargains. Uh, subject material is sort of narrow, but uh, it's great. You know, it's muscle cars, customs, drag cars, pre-war cars, uh, 50s, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're all some some they're not stock vehicles by any means. This set comes with two vehicles. I guess I gotta show this part. We got a uh, front engine dragster, and then we got the the Giacomo. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> yeah, no Giacomo, no Jocko, Jocko Johnson Streamliner. So another really uh, innovative uh, person that did drag racing and this is one of his ideas and then we got the purple gang top fuel dragster which i think they were used for the garlets dragster too this thing's a real vehicle i guess they made a few of these bodies the man made this vehicle and a couple others um the frame and all that and then people put their power plants in but he did make one with the allison v12 which is an aviation engine very cool engine it was one of the V12 engines that were in, like, the Mustang, P-51 Mustang, and uh, some other, like, the P-38 Lightning, I think. And those were really cool planes. Basically, our version of the Merlin and the Rolls-Royce 12s, 
um, that Europe used, which are really good engines too. Uh, this would have been um, liquid cooled, supercharged, and it might have had turbos too, but supercharged for sure. Um, fuel injection. I think it's fuel injection. Either it's fuel injection or like they had a fuel control or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, amazing engine. And then here it is in the car. And uh, full moving parts. Now, this no, there's really no plastic in this casting. It's uh, all metal. Even though the real car, I think this was composite. It's fiberglass. But we have the frame, which is die cast. And then we have the chassis, which is die cast. And the windshield frame is die cast with a, with a, you know. So they don't really do parts like this anymore because of the cost. I'm sure the metal and stuff back then, the ratio, like the amount of metal in these cars and the detail. And the fact that they're super low production number. I don't know. I maybe mean, they made a lot of the cars. But they didn't reuse the casting over and over again. So, I mean, they had development costs in this, but they maybe ran it. You know, a few different iterations, but it wasn't like the 1957 uh, Chevy that <laughs> main line that they used for since the 70s. They definitely didn't have that kind of cost of scale. Now these are expensive, I guess back then they weren't crazy money, and a lot of times they'd be on sale. And it was just right before I started really getting into it. And a lot of people say the same story. Um, you know, said so, so some people knew to get them or liked them, but. I just wasn't there. But now, I mean, they're incredible. So we'll start with the Streamliner, and then we'll get to this. This thing is amazing. So I've sung the praise of these cars before. Hopefully I don't single-handedly drive up the prices just because I like them so much because <laughs> I do like getting them. Um, but look at the Tampa work. Let's look at that first on the, the Cal. So this also being an 03, so like they made these you know, towards the middle early 2000s but this one didn't have the rubber band that you know a lot of these unfortunately you're going to get them and then the rubber band and we talked about that sometimes it rubs the paint off and stuff like that but this one had the regular cellophane tape that was like plastic so there was no degradation of the acids or the oils or whatever is in that rubber band um, that ruins it. So this had a super. This was taped down, screwed up, um, but super clean. And just, I mean, look, um, <laughs> look how nice that is. I mean, perfect layment. There's no issues with it. And this is a piece of metal. The holes are cut so perfectly, so they fit right over the headers. And we'll we'll see that in here in a minute. But that's the piece here. I almost passed on this, so I looked at it, and this thing looks really goofy in the package, because you're like, well, that doesn't look very detailed, but I was like, it's a good price, and this really caught my eye, and we'll look at the purple dragster to me, because you could tell the dragster was intricate, but this is just as good, so fully chromed out, which would have been common back then, they used to polish the thing out, and you'd see them look like that all chromed out and then the front of it would have the supercharger and I think the water pump or something like that now this car here's our rear end and then there's our transmission it looks like you yeah. know we can look underneath too so this screw really only holds this piece on the engine which is plastic but the rest I said the rest of the car is metal this is all metal here too. And this is really cool. So they have the base which they, you know, do the spin rivet. And then this whole piece is one piece. And so these this tubing, this frame structure is part of the casting. So it's what look at the how great that looks. Even back here, or most of the time that you know that would have been just painted black and solid. This piece right here, this triangulation see right through it so just great and then not to mention wheels and tires no one does and i don't think anybody's done anything better mini gt is pretty close but um these are like hard rubber they're not going to go anywhere the fitment of the tire on the rim is perfect and there's no out of roundness i mean 
this thing lays really close to the ground and it rolls perfectly and then the front has the dragster spokes which are in a wider pattern than the back and that's that streamliner it's got that kind of tapered shape that they're experimenting i guess this car would go quick it was light but it had an issue where you exceeded a certain speed it would uh, be unpredictable sometimes it would fly up and stuff so um, there was a speed I guess they stopped using this design because cars were getting fast during this time frame I believe this was the 50s when they were doing this car 40s 50s so they were just starting to get the power out of the cars 50s maybe early 60s I can't I mean I think I read about this yeah late 50s 60s yeah like early 60s yeah, so one of the fastest cars, though. And I think the V12 one was an exhibition car more than it was a competition car. Um, but here it is, and so cool. I don't know if we got a picture one more time of the cockpit. You can see it's got the racing steering wheel. And you can see a little bit more how the canopy looks. So sweet car, rolls awesome. Tempted to put it down a Hot Wheels track, <laughs> but not this thing. It's, it's too nice. So, awesome car, right? There we go. Now, the rail dragster. Look at this thing. So, front engine dragster back then. Just monster cars. And this is the type of car where you sat on the rear end. Or just over it, so... You made sure that that thing was built correctly because that could really hurt if you didn't have the protection. So it looks like we got a Hemi with a blower. And you can see the intricacy of the front tires. But they have a tread pattern still. They're not just like a O-ring or whatever. It's really treaded. So they do a drop axle. I mean, just really cool. So this is... An axle like a Hot Wheels axle where the you have the spun end where the, the tire won't come off or the wheel won't come off. And they they do this drop bend just like a real car would have that axle. So it's fixed in, in three points. So it doesn't rotate. But the car is just, I mean, it's set up perfectly. And this is all at 164 scale. And we have the great Tampa work that's not crooked or anything, you know. And these are these are things today that it's probably just because of how labor works and everything else, or how this is run, or how much money you can spend, or how much things cost. That you really, I mean, this is pretty good for what it for what they were doing. You know, this is stuff that was conceived in the nineteen nineties this stuff in uh, late 1990s and they executed these things awesomely the tires are perfect the wheels are perfect there's no flashing in the wheels or you know that would be a problem today uh, the tampo may work on the tire is not crooked <laughs> I mean just like simple things just are not a problem with this car which they can be problems I mean I'm really not trying to knock it or complain because really I understand these cars are tiny and the, the costs are different. So I just, it's, I revel in what you can find today and, uh, I'm, I'm getting a pretty good collection. I mean, most of the cars that are my Hot Wheels cars are back here because I love them so much. They're cool cars. They're unique. They're unique. They kind of buck the trend a little bit what we're getting into nowadays with all these hyper cars and. And the quality is just different, so they're peeking in there. <laughs> but they're cool. They're really super cool cars. They're meant to be really taken out and enjoyed, I think. Um, and not just sit in that plastic case. Which, by the way, these are great cases. And they all have their own size. They're never the same, really the same size as one another. Which is kind of like annoying, but also interesting. It makes them kind of unique that way. Uh, the size, I guess, is the same if they're the single pack. But the double packs, they're usually different sizes, it seems like. 
So they have the base here where they're racing each other. So I thought that was kind of cool too. Got this little center line on it. So that's all I got today. I don't think it went too long, but we had some cars to talk about, I guess. <laughs> I really love the van. Keep it up, M2. Good job. Uh, you know, this almost kind of seems like appropriate, doesn't it? It's kind of look like he's here today to push him on salt or <laughs> or help this dude out. So this, this really fits in with all that, too. Because these are 164 scale. They're not off. That's the other thing about them. They're not just a made-up scale. So... I said my piece. Hope everybody's been enjoying themselves, looking for vehicles. I know it's frustrating for me, but also very rewarding. And I try to be patient, let things come as they are, and uh, not try so hard. Try to enjoy it. And that's what I try to do, and I really like it. And I think when I'm upset, it's only a car that I want. And it's not something that... Um, I should get because everybody else is getting it's always cars I want it says I try to eliminate myself from trying to follow trends that I think that helps me collect and uh, I love looking at the old stuff I mean in this frame right now I'm looking at this little setup this looks awesome <laughs> that looks really good so all right well there we go more to come cars are coming in so we'll, we'll have another one soon I really want to do another scale as well. I'm just picking what I want to want to look at off the shelf. So, hope everybody's been well. Till next time.